All right, Abby, a master IEP coach, thank you for joining me today. And if you could just give us a better idea of what a master IEP coach is and also how you got involved uh, in that line of work. Awesome. So I am a licensed special education teacher in multiple states at this point in time. And I've been in the world of education and special needs for pretty much my entire adult life. So a master IEP coach is um, someone who really, really understands the IEP process from an internal perspective or just living it by being at the IEP table. But as a coach, I get to help parents understand that process so that they can best advocate for their kids' needs. Okay, excellent. Um, so, and I'm assuming you maybe have had some past experiences that have led you to this calling. Uh, so yes. can you give us an idea of some of your unique experiences uh, and maybe some of the things that you saw that were being uh, overlooked or missed that you feel like need to be addressed with uh, these kiddos that have learning and behavioral challenges? Yes. So from the time I was really young, I have been fascinated with behavior that looks outside normal. Um, and like at 18, I was started working as a teacher's aide in a special education classroom. So over the years that evolved to getting my teaching license. And I recognized really quick being in schools as a private ABA therapist that school systems weren't always really receptive to understanding how to meet behavioral needs. And so that led me to become a general education teacher, knowing I could provide something different just by understanding. And then eventually I went back to special education and over the years, um, the system got more and more frustrating because I would have kids who had behavioral needs, but I couldn't get them met no matter what I did because I was blocked by the system or how things had to be according to a district. And so then I became a mom and as the cards would have it, I got the opportunity to parent a pretty amazing little boy who lived in fight or flight all the time and had some pretty high behavioral needs. And when all the traditional approaches weren't working to address his needs, I started digging deeper and came across the brain-based understanding of behavior and really started to see those behaviors for what they were, which were stress responses. And that was kind of the game changer for me. It radically changed my teaching and it made me really passionate about learning more. And so when I got the opportunity to do the master IEP coach training and combine all of that knowledge and experience into a tool to help other families navigate the special education system, that was it. And that's the direction I've gone ever since. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, how many years have you been in uh, the education system? Oh, a lot. Um, I've been a licensed teacher for 14 years. I did all the other things like being a special ed teacher. I worked for a private agency supporting kids in classrooms and at home since I was 18. So about good 20 plus years at this point, I've lived in this world and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, are there certain times that you see, uh, I guess, maybe the regressions or deflections that uh, these kids have uh, these needs in? Uh, are there certain times throughout the year or uh, occurrences that pop up in life that you find that there is more of a need for them to uh, seek care or uh, resources for assistance? The short answer is anytime that the demands exceeds a child's ability, we're going to likely see some deflections or some stress. Um, we're going to see behaviors. What it's going to look like is going to be different for every child, depending upon the tools that they have already to process their world. And so some common times you might see this might be around transitions. Um, it might be when something big is about to happen, like something, whether it's exciting or not exciting you know, not being able to kind of stay regulated through that can lead to some behavioral challenges. The other big one is a lot of kids that I work with and see really struggle with understanding or with being able to visualize or predict what's coming next. Like they just can't see in their mind's eye because they haven't yet developed that skill. And so that will often lead to an increase in anxiety, which can look like behaviors as they're fighting to control their environment so they can stay regulated and function on some level. Okay. Well, uh, now with the IEP process, it seems like it's very 
and you alluded to this a little bit ago, but it's very captivated by what the district or the school will allow typically. And with some of your own personal experiences as well as professional experiences, it, it would seem like there might be some uh, pros to that, but also maybe some cons. And then there might be some resources to look at or to integrate in to the process at, outside of the school system. Could you just elaborate a little bit on uh, what you've seen and with that? Yeah, so the laws that govern special education actually aren't that old. They're only have been around since about the 80s. Prior to that, special education was a little bit of a free for all. And you often would hear stories about kids just kind of being sent away or not even included in the system at all because the system couldn't handle them. So from that, that vantage point, the fact that we have laws and we have rules both federally and at the state level is a huge win for helping kids with needs access their education. Um, like any set of hard written rules, there's limitations when you don't fit into the box. And so one of the benefits of understanding this system is you can also understand some of the gray areas. And by asking the right questions, I found that we can look at things differently. And so what might be a no on the surface, if you dive deeper into a policy, and this is where having an IEP coach can be really beneficial, we can collaborate with a school district team to help see things differently because ultimately everyone has the same goal and that's meet the needs of the child. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> so in that, uh, approach uh, that you have, I guess, with the parents that are having uh, these challenges with their children, do they sometimes need to look outside of what the school has to offer? And if so, what would they be looking for potentially? They're out, so schools are limited, and especially in this climate we're in right now, staff shortages are a really big problem, and it's impacting kids getting their needs met, not for lack of everybody wanting to, but there just simply aren't the people. Um, so a lot of parents are looking outside, and I would recommend it. I will tell you from our personal journey um, with my son that getting chiropractic care was a game changer for our family, and in particular, getting care from a chiropractor that understood the importance of the nervous system and had a brain-based approach like we were holding at home in our parenting. And so um, I wish schools would offer that. They're not. It's just not part of the system. Um, however, it's definitely an area that when you're looking at outside services, I think it's overlooked, but can make a tremendous difference in kids having be, changing the trajectory that they're on to a path that's letting them live their best life. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. The brain-based neurologic approach is in health uh, in general, that is the, the best approach for sure. Mm -hmm. so, okay, awesome. Um, anything else that you'd like to add in uh, from what you've experienced that, that you'd like to share with any families looking for additional help outside of what the school has to offer? So I will tell you after 12 years of being in the education system in special education, um, there's things I'm learning every day on the inside. And I went to school and was formally trained. So walking, you know, walking parents through understanding this system that's just kind of thrown at you. You come into a meeting, they're like, hey, here's your rights. Here's all the things that are wrong with your kid. Here's what we're going to do about it is super, super overwhelming. Having a resource like an IEP coach can be huge in helping parents relieve their own stress around their child's educational experience because I can take the time to explain the system to them and help them understand the why, help them navigate the how do we solve this problem and help them truly be an informed team member, which is what the law says they should be, um, so that the child's needs are being met. Gotcha. So I guess who is your ideal uh, client that uh, you would be liking to work with? My ideal client would be somebody whose child is experiencing social, emotional, or behavioral challenges in school um, that has an IEP. And um, bonus points if they're getting chiropractic care because they already understand that piece. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Uh, but just it sounds like that they're looking for additional help on that IEP to give them some uh, direction yeah. or additional resources uh, that could be helpful in that uh, process. 
Yeah, so most specifically, my favorite parts of the IEP process are the accommodations and the behavior support plan. Um, this is often an underutilized, very generic form that's supposed to tell a team how to address a child's challenging behaviors. And so what I have seen in both working for a school district, but also in the IEP coaching private world, is that if we take a brain-based approach and really help a team understand why certain supports are needed, um, often focusing on building a relationship with the child and helping them to stay regulated and being willing to adjust demands to meet that child where they're at. Um, I watch kids blossom in a pretty awesome way. And so um, it's, it's a little bit of a coaching and teaching for all parts of the team to see that brain-based perspective and the power behind it and that we're not just letting Johnny get away with something. Um, no offense to any Johnnies out there, but it's pretty exciting to watch a kid thrive when they're re receiving appropriate supports. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then if there's families wanting to reach out to you to see if what you offer could be a good fit for them and their families and their needs, uh, what's the best way for them to find you? So uh, my website is in development, but accessible. It's abbybutcher.com um, and it's spelled A-B-B-E-Y, which is not the norm. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. And so um, if you look me up under Abby Butcher, you should find me. Otherwise, um, I know you're going to post this, Dr. Isaac. So, you know, dropping you a line, you can get me in touch as well. Sure. Yeah, I, we will definitely be posting links to your site as well. So awesome. I, well, great. Well, thank you for sharing, Abby. And I hope this uh, provides another resource to families that are uh, searching for the help. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.